Module 2, Objective 8, describe the organization of the dermis and explain how the arrangement of the extracellular proteins promote skin turgor. The dermis is sandwiched between the epidermis and the subcutaneous fat layer. It anchors the epidermal accessory structures, such as the glands and the follicles, and it consists of two components. There is a superficial papillary layer, named because of these nipple-like papilla, and a deeper reticular layer. The papillary layer is largely um, aurelier tissue. It contains capillaries, lymphatics, and, and neurons. Uh, the epidermal papillae project between the epidermal ridges. The reticular layer is a dense, irregular connective tissue, and it contains larger blood vessels, lymphatic vessels, and nerves. And this is where a lot of our collagen and elastic fibers are found. Dermatitis is an inflammation of the papillary layer. Remember, itis refers to just inflammation of. So if you have bronchitis, inflammation of the bronchioles appendicitis, inflammation of the appendix. In this case, we have inflammation of the dermis, specifically the papillary layer. It's caused by an infection, um, mechanical irritation. So if you've ever had a blister or, or chemicals, poison ivy can lead to dermatitis. And it's usually characterized uh, by an itch and, and pain. The strength of our dermis and the elasticity of our dermis is largely due to the protein fibers found within. Collagen is a very strong fiber that resists stretching, though it does bend or twist. Elastic fibers, on the other hand, permit for stretching, and they recoil um, once that pressure is relieved, almost like a rubber band, so it provides some flexibility. So it's a combination of the collagen and the elasticity that gives our skin its turgor. Skin damage <coughs> um, includes a number of things. Uh, sagging and wrinkles is, is a reduction in the elasticity. So as those elastic fibers are broken down, uh, we lose the, the elasticity of our skin, and our skin sags and wrinkles. Dehydration can lead to sagging and wrinkles, age, uh, hormonal changes, or even exposure to, to UV radiation. Uh, this particular image at the top, if you notice, one side of his face is considerably more aged than the other. Any thoughts as to, to why? Well, uh, I will tell you, um, this individual was a truck driver for uh, his adult life. So this side of his face got a lot more UV exposure than the other side. And you can see as the UV radiation broke down those elastic fibers that it promoted sagging and wrinkles uh, compared to the other. Stretch marks is thickened tissue that results from excessive stretching of the skin, either due to weight gain or pregnancy. Uh, basically, if the body grows quicker than the skin can, it's going to lead to the thickening of the tissues and stretch marks. Um, contrary to popular belief, there's not a lot you can do for stretch marks. It is, uh, there is some genetic component behind it, which addresses why some uh, individuals are prone to stretch marks and others are not. But once you get them, they're there. There are some laser surgeries that may reduce the redness of a stretch mark, but no amount of cream or special um, topical ointment would, uh, can prevent them. If you look at the collagen and uh, the elastic fibers um, within our dermis and how it's organized, we find that it makes very distinctive patterns called the lines of cleavage. And we can see in this image over here the patterns of those uh, particular fibers. So they, they run in very particular fashions. And this is, um, these are used by surgeons. And, and here's the idea. If you have stretched rubber bands <coughs> and you are going to cut, if you cut 
against those stretched rubber bands, you can just imagine how these rubber bands would recoil and it would leave a very large gap between the bands. And that large gap would have to be filled with scar tissue. So the idea is if you can cut with the grain, so to speak, you would effectively reduce scarring. So surgeons uh, use lines of cleavage as they're planning their surgeries. Um, for anybody who's had a cesarean, we know that the bikini cut is a very popular option because it's going to cut right here with the lines of cleavage and it's going to reduce scarring. Back in the olden days, they did a, just a, a transverse cut right down the abdomen and it left a really large uh, scar. And sometimes even today, if it's a, a, an emergency case, they may do a transverse cut to remove um, a fetus or a baby from the womb. So lines of cleavage are used, if possible, um, in medicine to help reduce scarring.